Next up, she's a 2000, 2007 graduate, according to her Facebook page, of, uh, of Earlham College, who just made her triumphant return as Earlham's Director of Outdoor Education. Please welcome Kim Reed. So my story starts uh, two weeks into a three week long canoe trip in the Everglades. Uh, two of my nine Outward Bound students, uh, we'll call them Edgar and Chris, had just gotten into a big fight over a bottle of mustard. Um, <laughs> Edgar had tossed the uh, bottle of mustard towards Chris and either he didn't toss it hard enough or Chris didn't react fast enough, uh, but the bottle of mustard ended up in the water and sank to the bottom of the Everglades never to be seen again. Uh, so Chris, uh, ignoring the fact that he didn't know how to swim, stood up in the canoe, uh, took off his PFD, and threatened to uh, cross three canoes uh, towards Edgar in order to punch him in the face. Um, so needless to say, our lunch took uh, a little bit longer than we had anticipated um, because we had to talk about safety on the canoes and talk about assertive communication and how to properly manage your anger in the middle of the Everglades uh, as well as at home, uh, at school, and in the rest of the world. Um, so my job uh, as a wilderness instructor for Outward Bound was to keep my students safe uh, but also to push them outside of their comfort zones uh, so that they could uh, work on whatever it was that they needed to be working on. So if that was anger management or communication, uh, sometimes it was decision making or goal setting. Um, but we were there as part of a special hour bound course that was funded by the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice. Uh, and it was a prevention program to try to keep uh, teenagers out of the correctional system. Uh, we also had some students there who uh, had already been in trouble with the law, uh, and so they uh, were there court ordered. Um, so usually they had the choice of three to six months in a juvenile detention center or one month at Outward Bound. Um, and so a lot of them picked Outward Bound uh, and then usually regretted it on day three um, <laughs> when they uh, realized that they would be eaten by mosquitoes, there were uh, clouds of these little bugs that we call noceums. Um, we were bathing in water that had alligators and crocodiles in it. Uh, they were hearing stories about the 20-foot pythons in the water. Um, we were paddling against the tide, against the wind. Uh, and then they really didn't like uh, pooping in a bucket on the boats. Uh, so because there's, there's no land in the Everglades, so everything you do is on the boats. Um, and then you had to paddle that bucket around with you. Um, So they were not, yeah, they were not excited to be there. Uh, but this particular day, they were pretty excited because it was going to be the first time in two weeks that we were going to be on land. Um, so, because we had paddled through all the mangroves and made it out to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we were just gonna paddle along the shore up to Highland Beach. And that was where we were going to all get out um, and we were gonna do a 48 hour solo experience, which is where they could uh, reflect and rest uh, for two straight days uh, by themselves um, before we would have to head back. Uh, this was also when we would do a resupply, so we would get more food, more water, uh, switch out our poop bucket, and maybe get some more mustard, um, <laughs> which they were all really excited about. So, unfortunately, because of the mustard incident, uh, we did not make it to Highland Beach that night, uh, so we had to turn off of the Gulf. Uh, we went down a river as far as we could go, but the tide was pretty far out, so we couldn't go quite as far as we wanted to. Uh, and we found a little nook that we were able to throw our anchors down um, to make camp for the night. Uh, see, because there is no land, so you have to sleep on the boats. Um, and so some hour bound instructors from long ago uh, had figured out the system using uh, plywood boards that were about the width and length of the canoes and they would stay uh, on the bottom of the canoes during the day and we would bring them out at night uh, and put them on top uh, and then we'd use some rope to tie some of them down so they wouldn't all be slipping all over the place uh, to make a nice little raft for us to sleep on. So we would have dinner, talk about our plans for the next day uh, and then go to sleep on this raft. 
Um, we would, we had these PVC uh, pipes that were like the skinnier ones that we would stick uh, in the ends of the canoe straight up so that we could hang clotheslines from them and then tie up these like individual bug nets that they would all sleep in. Um, so it's just a whole line of bug nets. So we were kind of like little sardines all next to each other. Um, but I really liked this system because uh, you were sleeping under the stars. Uh, and so it's just really nice. I would usually bring my uh, contact lens case in with me so I could just like, lay and watch the stars uh, before I went to sleep um, and before I took out my contacts. So we all went to, to sleep that night um, on the boats. And at some point in the middle of the night, I had my uh, co-instructor, uh, Jason, starts nudging me. And he's like, hey, we got to get up. Uh, because it had started drizzling. So it normally doesn't ever rain uh, at night in the Everglades, um, but he was starting to feel just like a little bit of spit coming through um, his bug net. So I woke up our other uh, co-instructor, Mel, and we went in search of the tarp. Um, and so we found it under one of the sleeping students under their board. Uh, so I had to like gently lift it up to grab the tarp out. And then we were being really careful to be quiet and not wake everybody up. Um, and so we were trying to like, gently and gracefully uh, unfold this really big tarp um, that was not graceful uh, at all and was very loud uh, and then was weighing down on the students um, as they were sleeping. So they were starting to, to get annoyed with us. But we got the tarp out, we spread it over uh, the whole raft, used the PVC pipes to tie it off. Uh, we got two paddles that we lashed together to make a big pole in the center. Um, so we put it up in the center and it made kind of like a circus tent over all the sleeping students. Uh, and then we went back to bed. Next time uh, I wake up, uh, it's to fuck. And then rephrase from another student. And then <laughs> uh, fudge, freak, french fry. Uh, and then some mumbling. <laughs> And so I'm like, okay, what are they going to do? Um, but we realized that the, the center pole had fallen and hit, and hit one of the students while they were sleeping. So, so I'm waiting. And so then uh, Edgar, uh, one in the mustard uh, incident, had gotten up and he fixed the pole uh, and then went back to sleep. And I was like, okay, good. Um, we're all right. A few minutes later, I hear some more cursing, uh, some more mumbling, and the pole had fallen over again. Um, so I wait again, see what's going to happen. Um, they don't get up this time to fix the pole. I'm like, it's fine. We're only going to have a little bit of drizzle. We all go back to sleep. Next time I wake up, <laughs> more cursing, more mumbling. But this time I have this really strange sensation that my feet are underwater. Um, and then my ankles feel wet and my calves and my knees and the water is slowly making its way up my sleeping bag. Um, so I start nudging Jason uh, and being like, hey, hey, we gotta get up. Uh, he's sound asleep. So I'm like really nudging him more. Finally he wakes up and he's like, what's going on? What's going on? And I was like, I think we're sinking. <laughs> like, I think that the boats are taking on water. Like, I don't know how this is possible, but I'm definitely getting wet. Uh, so Jason and Mel and I all get up and we realize that a pool of water uh, has formed in the center of the tarp uh, to make this little lake. And the tarp has given out, so the water is now pouring through the center of the tarp all over all of the sleeping students and all over their sleeping bags. Um, so they're not happy. <laughs> so uh, we're rushing around trying to fix the tarp, trying to get the pole, tightening it on the PVC pipes. <coughs> Uh, when then another student, uh, Ben, points and he's like, there's a motorboat. Uh, and so he's looking out at the uh, mouth of the river towards the gulf. Uh, and so we all turn around and we're like, like, there is a motorboat and it looks like it's coming right towards us. Um, and so then another student is like, I think we're moving. Uh, so I don't have my contacts in, so I'm trying to look through the darkness and look through the rain at the, and I can't tell really what's going on. But then I look back towards the motorboat and I realize that it is not moving towards us, but that we are moving towards it and we are going out towards the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so I'm like, oh shit. Uh, and then a student's like, rephrase. Uh, and then we hit, hit the motorboat. Um, which slows us down, but does not completely stop us. We uh, ended up pulling the 
uh, anchor of the motorboat up with us, oh, uh, and it starts wrapping around our anchors. Um, so Mel is like quickly rushing over to the side, like trying to get us towards the shore to tie us off. So she ends up tying our raft off to uh, one of the mangroves that's on the shore, um, which is great, it gets us stopped. Uh, but then we realize because of the direction that our raft is facing, the water is coming out so quickly that it's pulling down the one side of our raft and is just like a quarter of an inch away from uh, completely swamping that boat. Uh, so <laughs> I'm like quickly like hopping over all of the, the bug nets trying to get to the other side of the raft. Uh, I managed to tie off that side while Mel tries to untie us so that we can uh, switch directions. Of course, she can't get the knot untied because of the pressure. Um, so she gets her knife out, cuts it. The whole raft swings 90 degrees. And so now the noses of our boats are pointing towards the rushing water, so we're good. Um, so we, we decide that we can stay. We tie off the, the motorboat. Um, and so we all decide, okay, we can go back to sleep now. Um, we're safe. So students are like mumbling about how we're green and how we're all trying them and all those sorts of things. Um, but eventually they do go back to sleep. Uh, and I crawl into my soaking wet sleeping bag and it was one of the most miserable uh, experiences I've had in the outdoors. Um, but everybody, everybody goes back to sleep because it's still a couple hours until the sun comes up. Um, the sun does come up and it's scorching. Um, so we're all super hot and we have to get out. The bugs are horrendous, of course. Um, and we then eventually convince the students that we need to paddle the 50 feet out to the Gulf of Mexico um, so that we can get some wind to get, the bug, get rid of all the bugs. Um, they eventually do that. Uh, so then we're able to paddle up the shore a little bit. We find a little slab of land. Um, we all stop. We get the, the students out. They spread out um, on, the, on the beach. We get them some food. We go check in with all of them to make sure that they're uh, doing okay. And eventually uh, we bring them all back um, so that we can head on our way uh, to, to the beach. Um, Thankfully, they're in much better moods now. Uh, and then our one student, Chris, who was also in the mustard incident, um, decides that he's gonna give a pump up speech to the group, um, which was amazing. And he even used uh, one of the phrases that I had taught him um, a couple days before. That's a really famous Outward Bound quote um, that says, there's more in you than you know. Um, and so at this point, the students didn't know that this was actually my first uh, <laughs> course that I had ever led in the Everglades. Um, and so even though this speech was really meant for the students and to get them all fired up, it was really exactly what I needed to hear. So thank you. That, that was awesome. And I, probably you all caught this, but I think it just bears repeating. I mean, I've done stuff in the outdoors, but I had no idea that the way you slept in the Everglades was to build a, a raft on top of canoes out of, out of wood that you carried with you. I mean, and so you build your own floating raft every night. And somehow, like, being, like, being on that is still like the we were safe then part of the story. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that just that contraption by itself um, to me is amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you, Kim. That was that was awesome. So let's clap for Kim again.